Hello guys, Reza here. Welcome to another how to video. I'm going to explain how to enable and apply wind effect inside Marvelous Designer. Let's get started. Now, there are many things you can do apart from creating garments inside Marvelous Designer. One of them is to create wind effect. I've got a character with a cape um, and the cape is nothing too specific. It's basically a rectangle 2D pattern and I just shaped it, scaled it properly and apply some pins. So if I were to simulate, you can see that the cape is going to stay put. As for the specifications and the properties of the fabric, um, particle distance is set to 13. I probably increase that to 16. It is a good idea not to have a very low particle distance, thinking that, well, I'm going to get um, wrinkles and details. It basically slows your scene down. So if you're planning on adding wind, best thing to do is to start with something like 20. I'm going to go to 16 or maybe 17. I know my computer can handle it, but it's going to dramatically slow your scene down if you bring the particle distance low to get a high quality result. Best thing to do is to take care of the look depth side of things with rather high particle distance and only when you get the result that you want, lower the particle distance and then you can output your result. All right, where to find this tool? Because first glance, wind is nowhere to be found. Well, to find the tool, you need to go to display, you need to go to environment and under environment, you have show wind controller. If I enable it, and by the way, that's how you hide the wind controller through the same menu you get a gizmo and that gizmo is your wind. It's a directional gizmo. What do I mean by that? You probably know if directional comes with any gizmo, it means that the location of it does not matter. Very similar to directional lights. So with directional lights, you don't really care where the light is located. The angle of the light is important, very similar to this gizmo. So where it's pointing at is important as opposed to where it's located. So just move it anywhere that you're comfortable with, even close to the character. So you can select that easily. Now you can see that there is an arrow in there and you can see that arrow in 3D. Now, every time you get that arrow, at the moment the arrow is pointing this way, it means that the gust of wind blows the opposite side, not towards the angle. So that's another sort of um, thing to be mindful of. It catches a lot of students off guard. You can select it. You can actually rotate it however you want in X, Y, Z. Again, position is not important. Now, let's go through some properties, but before that, let's simulate. I'm going to press simulation and you can see nothing is happening. I'm going to kind of bring this a little bit closer and start rotating it and you can see not much is happening. The reason that not much is happening because you first need to pay a visit to the property editor. So let's have a look at that. So to look at the properties of the wind, I'm just going to click on the wind itself and then we get to the property. You can name the wind. Wind controller sounds reasonable to me. Next one is activate. That explains why despite the simulation still running, we have no wind. As soon as I enable that, you can see that the wind starts blowing. Now there's a little bit of lag, which is, um, not ideal because of the particle distance. So be mindful of that. Um, I, I can go in here and you can see I can just change the direction of the wind however I want. 
you can see you can go up and down left and right and the direction of the wind changes so that's that next is the type I'm going to stop the simulation next is the type and the we have two types of uh, the wind planar and spherical obviously planar wind blows only from the designated direction so it's a, a directional type of wind regardless of controller's location the next one is spherical which is more like an omni um, and that blows wind in all direction now if I go ahead and start simulating and switch to spherical you can see it kind of slows down down a little bit uh, the reason for that is usually for spherical you need more intensity which brings me to my next attribute strength is the intensity of the wind obviously the higher the value the stronger the wind i can just lower this down from thousand to 500 and you can see we instantly reduce the intensity of the wind I can probably go in here and start playing around with the direction of the wind like so so basically that's how you adjust the wind I'm going to select the gizmo go to the next one and next one is decay which creates decay uh, for the wind so uh, as you increase this value the um, wind blows but in a weaker fashion it loses energy as it travels and eventually dies so if the value is zero the blue is um, in a straight line endlessly but if you increase that decay to I don't know something like 20 you can see it it tones down a little it's not going to be as intense you can go all the way to 100. I'm just going to set that to zero. Next one is frequency. And with frequency, it's actually quite interesting. Um, it creates intervals. So sets a cycle for the wind and uh, the wind repeatedly uh, blows weaker and stronger and weaker and stronger in intervals of set value of second. So if I go to, you can see goes down down up down and it continues you can change the cycle by changing the value per second so it's going to be five no no wind and they get five no wind so on and so forth i'm going to select the wind and set that to zero and of course if it's set to zero it blows regularly the other one that is very useful is turbulence and turbulence adds noise to the strength the higher the value the more chaotic and irregular the wind intensity we do need that intensity because if i set that to zero look what happens it actually uh, freezes in space because there is no noise or turbulence to move this cape so uh, it doesn't matter how photoreal or, or stylized you want to work with the wind controller you kind of need a little bit of turbulence obviously if i set that to 100 then it's going to be super chaotic but in a um, stormy environment that's probably what you want or you can give it a just a little bit of turbulence to add just a little bit of noise to your simulation of course you can use um the timeline here and activate key and keyframe the values if you want we are not going to get into that I'm going to dedicate a session on animation inside marvelous designer so I'm not gonna jump ahead of time and that's pretty much what you need to know about wind controller inside marvelous designer very very straightforward you can deactivate it at any point of time and you can go ahead into display into environment and hide the wind or con wind control if you're not using it that's pretty much it hope you find this video useful see you guys in the next video